when WCW is gone, dead, you know, dead and buried, it's over. Vince buys it. Is that sho- like shocking to you at that point? Because to me, it's as a fan, it's like, oh my god, Vince bought WCW, and as as the jokes online now or go, he bought it for so cheap that he paid all the women that he had these uh, affairs with. He paid them more money to be quiet than he paid for WCW. But were you surprised? <laughs> you know, funny thing, I hadn't heard that yet, but that's great. And it's, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's all over. Yeah, I that's all over that. the place. Oh, man, yeah. that's great. It's yeah. actually, they were saying three times more that he paid for the women that he paid for WCW. <laughs> that's funny. That's kind of like when I, I watched a um, documentary on the death of SMU football back in the day, you know, and Eric Dickerson was, you know, the star running back. But they oh, talked yeah. about how many players were paid back then, and they talked about when Eric Dickerson got drafted to the NFL, Oh, he actually took a pay cut, you know. <laughs> He's making so much money, he might have yeah, yeah. So, yep. But um, but no, yeah. Um, here's the funny thing, John, is that I remember pretty much exactly where I was when I when I got the uh, the message that we had been, you know, that the company had been uh, bought out. I don't. I, I just think in the beginning, I think all I knew was it was it was bought out by, and, and probably I didn't know it, you know. It was WWF or, or excuse me, WWE at the time. But, um, uh, but I remember, I remember pulling over and this is a weird thing to, to but I, it just, it stuck with me all these years. I remember pulling over and literally taking like this deep breath, like, and it literally was like, like a million pounds had been lifted off my shoulders. And it took me a while to really consciously understand what was going on. But what it was, was that back then, and it's still this way now, um, uh, as far as I think most of the, maybe not so much in AEW, but I, I think in the, in WWE, it's probably the same way. It was, you know, most contract, you have your contract, but you know, you're an independent contractor and they usually have these 90 day clauses built in that they can reevaluate you every 90 days and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, at that time, and, and this is not, I'm not saying this was necessarily um, anybody, you know, purposely made people feel this way, but because you always knew that literally you could get let go at any time, it, it really, you know, most of the contracts, as you know, my agent would say, they're not worth the paper they're printed on. You know? right, it's, right, uh, yep. But is that um, there was this pressure, like always walking on eggshells, like, man, if I, if you know, uh, and there's a kind of an old saying in the rest of business, it's a one strike business, you know, that, you know, you could, you know, just, you know, tick off the wrong person and, and you know, fair or not, you could be gone, you know. So there was this pressure that I didn't realize I was living under for, for those five years that, you uh, that as soon as I knew I couldn't be fired, like that, you know, the, 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 as far as the run, the ride with WCW was now definitely over, not just for me, but everybody who was there, it was over. Like I was without a job at that point, you know? And, uh, but yeah. And so, but it was, it was crazy. It was like this, this almost like relief to a certain extent, like all that pressure is now gone. 